Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and we're here for my MSI bracket stage day number four overview and analysis. It's the final winners bracket, upper bracket round number one series that we're going to be covering because it's the final one of the tournament. And so, you know, after this, we're going to know who's going to be in that second round in the upper bracket and who's going to be moving down to the lower bracket for the rest of the tournament. But really excited to go over this one. Uh, you know, on paper, it's a little bit of a mismatch, definitely. But there are some interesting things that can happen when you put a really, you know, dominant team against a, a big underdog with something to prove. And that's what we have here today, of course. Of course, if you want to know my thoughts, not only on this series, but on every series and every team, you can check out the videos that are linked up in the iCard right now up there. There's going to be my pre-tournament MSI Primer where I go in-depth on every single one of these teams and power rank them so you can kind of get an idea of where my thoughts are. And then, of course, I also have a main stage bracket prediction video that you can check out. Of course, I've also covered every single game at the tournament up until this point. You can check that out in the MSI playlist. All three of those things are going to be linked. And uh, I highly recommend you do, obviously, after watching this video or before. You can, you know, go check it out and come back. But watch this video. I really would appreciate it. You know, retention time is really good on YouTube right now. So, um, anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Of course, I want to know down below what you guys thought was going to happen in this series. I have a pretty good idea which way you guys probably thought it was going to go. But I'd love to hear you guys' detailed thoughts down below. And, of course, whether or not it lived up to your expectations. But with that being said, what we do here on the channel, if you are new, is we go game by game talking about the advantages... And and the disadvantages that each team is able to generate. I give out a player of the game and a dud of the game, and at the end of the series, I give out a player of the series. So, a uh, pretty comprehensive breakdown, and it's time to jump right into it. Today, our final round one matchup is a matchup between the number one seed from the LPL in JD Gaming and the number two seed from the LCS in Golden Guardians. A very big mismatch on paper. JDG, arguably the best team in the world right now. Uh, I think them, T1, Gen.G, you know, they're the three that you're really going to be putting into that category. I had JDG at number one going into this tournament. Obviously, they haven't played yet, so nothing to kind of sway my mind, but Gen G and T1 both looking really good in their first round matchups. JDG hoping to match. This is the type of team in the LPL that absolutely dominated when they were allowed to. They lead the entire major region world in wins under 22 minutes, which is absurd, right? You know, when they won, they won hard. That's just kind of what this team did. Their mid game was exceptional and they were able to just kind of outskill people and just generate really quick ends, even if the early game wasn't necessarily perfect from them. But they did stumble every once in a while against teams that they maybe had no right to stumble to. And that's really what you're hoping that Golden Guardians is going to be able to do in this series. This is a team that is, you know, very surprising to be here in the first place, not only in the main stage, but at MSI, they were predicted to go eighth at the beginning of the LCS split, yada, yada, yada. You know the narrative. You don't need me to tell it to you. But they really have been playing well as of recent. They were able to take a game off of BLG, who at the very least looked competent against JD Gaming in the finals, even if JDG was definitely the better team in those LPL finals. But a lot of players with something to prove. You know, Stixa finally going against Ruler. That's been a, you know, a big thing for him throughout his career. Who he has always done relatively well at international tournaments. And Licorice has been on a really big hot streak. I think River and Gory are good players. This isn't a complete pushover of a team, but JD Gaming shouldn't be losing in the first round to hardly anybody. And I certainly don't think that's an exception in this matchup. So, of course, you know, in my bracket prediction, I did predict JD Gaming 3-0. I, I, I'm standing by that. I, I don't think this is going to be a particularly close series. I don't really see how Golden Guardians wins games unless JDG just forget how to team fight. because I think even if they are able to generate this, you know, 3, 4, 5k gold lead in the early game, JDG is the type of team that's just going to be able to outfight you in the late game and be able to bring that back. And so, you know, I, I definitely think matchup-wise this goes one way over the other, but it's always going to be interesting. Underdogs can sometimes get a little bit of leeway because teams don't take them as seriously, and that can definitely be the case here. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the game-by-game -game analysis, of course, starting off with game number one. And the winner of game number one was... JD Gaming. They are able to take the first game of the series here. They're able to go up one to nothing, and I would argue that this is super important for the series. I know I talk about game one being important in basically every series, but for Golden Guardians in particular, game one has always been a very important game for them because they're a team that relies on confidence and momentum a lot more than other teams kind of in their skill level. Not to say that they can't win without that confidence and without that momentum. I just think that it really accelerates them to a place that 
you know, puts them a little bit above where they would normally be able to perform. We saw that a lot in the LCS, that when they were in a groove, when they were on their, you know, they had their game face on, like, they were a lot more dangerous. They would go on a seven-game win streak. When they weren't, they'd go on a five-game losing streak. And so, really good of JDG to be able to just say, we're the better team, we were able to close this out quick, even if Golden Guardians was trying to make plays. And so, good stuff from them. But what ended up happening in this game? Well, JDG are able to get an early gold lead. Now, that isn't to say that they dominated the early game, because that's certainly isn't the case. They are able to get first blood on Stixay. Just bad macro, bad positioning uh, from Stixay in that position. Golden Guardians playing really aggro to try and secure that first Drake, and they are able to do that, but Stixay basically not respecting that JDG can make a play somewhere else on the map. This is the kind of thing that you can probably get away with at the LCS level. You're not going to be able to get away with it against JD Gaming, and so that's a big play early on, but actually, outside of that, it really was a lot of Golden Guardians making splash plays in the early game. Really good Herald fight for GG, where they are able to pick up a kill and the Herald, which is really nice. Nice. They eventually do drop that bot lane. A uh, really nice gank coming out from River, and, and this is very similar uh, to the Cloud9 thing, where they really wanted to try and get bot lane ahead. They really wanted to try to get this Aphelios online, which makes sense when you look at this comp, but, you know, Sticks and a Ruler can sometimes be a little bit interesting. They, they end up dropping the Herald bot. They end up picking up a kill with a nice gank, but they overstay, trying to get some plates, and Huki ends up going down, trading one for one. It's still a positive for Golden Guardians, but it's, it's the little things like that that, you know, keep that lead in favor of JDG, even even when Golden Guardians are making plays. 369 does get ganked in the top lane, but really where things start to go into the favor of JD Gaming is second Drake. A uh, big fight around second Drake that JDG, I think, wins three to nothing. Maybe it was four to nothing. Really, really big win for them. Ruler gets basically every kill in that fight, and then all of a sudden, the Jinx is now accelerated. And it's going to be much more difficult for Golden Guardians to actually team fight now, because not only do JDG have a lot of engage, you've got Maokai, you know, being able to zone control. You've got 369 as a complete beast. Like, he's terrifying to play against on this Gwen because he's going to play it like it's Malphite. Like, he's going to dive into your backline and just start hitting you. Even if he dies, he's going to be a nuisance. And then Missing was playing super aggro on the Braum, and so a lot of ways to engage. But you've also got the Jace and the Jinx and all these things on the backline that can be relatively safe and, you know, can actively cause you to, you know, be at half health before the team fight even starts. And so... You know, really good situational setup here by JD Gaming, and, and it's really huge for them that Ruler ends up getting ahead in that fight. And that's where things start to, I guess, spiral out of control. JDG start pushing their lead incredibly hard, and really where things become really in favor of JDG is the fight in the top lane. Ruler's not even there. He's pushing mid lane. He's just getting towers for free. It ends up being a 4v5. Uh, it was a 4v4 for most of the fight. 6A was a little bit late to it, but it ends up being a 4v5, and JDG still winning. Even with their AD carry not there, they're still able to win the fight. Knight, in particular, just a so much damage at this point. 369 and Missing are also playing at an incredibly high level in terms of engage and in terms of just being able to set up that Jace to be able to, you know, and even the Gwen, like, to be able to deal a ridiculous amount of damage. And, you know, from that point onwards, if they can't win a 4v5, it's pretty disastrous. Golden Guardians try to death push and they are able to pick up a kill, but they're just too far behind in gold. JDG can continue to press after that kill. They're able to pick up three more. They're able to pick up Baron. They're able to catch Gory and they're able to end the game. It's good stuff from JD Gaming. It's clinical. It's not panicky. It's it's exactly what you want to see. You want to see this JD Gaming team, even if they are able to, you know, give up some stuff in the early game, if Golden Guardians want to be aggressive and try to make these plays, and, you know, they were this game. They were aggressive. They did want to make these plays. JDG kept their cool. They knew that they were going to be able to out-team fight, and all it really took was that one fight around second Drake to immediately put Golden Guardians completely on the back foot. My player of the game is going to go to Knight in the mid lane, but realistically there are a couple players you could give this to. I really wanted to give this to Missing on the Braum because I thought he played really well in this game. He played Braum like a full engager, which is super fun to watch. You can really only get away with that if your AD carry is super good, and surprise, surprise, Ruler is super good, but uh, Missing was awesome this game. Super aggro, but to me, Knight's damage was just so impactful. I have 6A as done of the game. You'll see why in a little bit. I honestly feel a little bit bad for him because Knight was just throwing out those shockwaves, and you've got a Sejuani. You've got a Scion. You've got a Nautilus, and absolutely no one was blocking those shockwaves. Like, yes, 6A needs to be in a better position to be able to not get hit by those, but it is also up to Golden Guardians to realize that if you're going against a Jace and you have an Aphelios, you can't allow him to get hit by every single shockwave in a lot of these pre-engages, and, and Knight was just clinical. He was uh, an absolute marksman with a lot of these in this game, so he's going to get my player of the game, but everybody on JDG played well. Really no negatives, not a lot of mistakes coming out. Uh, Golden Guardians did invest a lot into bot lane in the early game, but even then, I would argue Ruler and Missing were significantly better than Stix and Huki in this game. 369 is an animal, incredibly aggressive, and Kanavi had great objective and a zone control in this game, and so just good stuff from JDG. As for Golden Guardians on the other side, not a good game from them in my opinion. I like the early game aggressiveness, but... 
Stick Say's just not holding up. Like, I, I I don't mean that in a negative way, but he was kind of bad against BLG. Elk gapped him pretty hard in that series, and now he's going up against Ruler and missing. And he starts up this series with a pretty bad game, pretty bad positioning, not really a lot of damage coming out, just being over-aggressive, not really understanding when he can be taken advantage of. And those are the kinds of mistakes that you really just can't afford to get away with at this level. He's going to get my dead of the game, but it's not like anybody else played particularly phenomenal. Again, River, Gory, Huki, someone needs to block those engages onto Stick Say, and nobody really did that. That. Gory was caught out a couple of times on the Scion. Licorice was caught out a couple of times on the Jax. In the mid to late game was just not very good from Golden Guardians, and quite frankly, that's not a surprise. That was their MO coming into this tournament, was that they are a really good early game team that is prone to throwing the game away in the late game, as we saw in the LCS playoffs. And so, going up against a team like JD Gaming, those early game plays need to be more impactful. You need to be able to walk out of that early game with a gold lead, and unfortunately, they just weren't able to do that here. But Game two is a new game. You gotta be able to turn that corner. There are positives to take away. I do think the aggressiveness is a good look, but you don't want to fall into the the same kind of trap that Cloud9 fell into basically the exact same way yesterday. I mean, this game was very similar to what a Cloud9 game was yesterday, where it's we're making splash plays, we're getting kills, but we're not actually gaining an advantage out of them. Uh, you don't want to fall into that trap. You need to be able to control the map in the early game. That's got to be priority number one. But for JD Gaming, if you're able to win the second game, you're feeling pretty good. If you go up 2-0 against Golden Guardians, you feel pretty good about being able to take this series without much trouble. So game two is going to be a really big one. You don't want to fall down 0-2 if you're GG. So who's going to be able to take it? Well, the winner of game number two was JD Gaming. They are able to take game number two. They're able to go up into this series two to nothing. And now we're really looking at a mountain to climb for Golden Guardians. But I do want to give them a lot of credit. This was a good game from Golden Guardians, all things considered. They weren't able to get it done in the end because, like I said a lot yesterday when it came to C9 versus BLG, all it really takes is one major mistake, and it's kind of what has happened for NA teams, I would say, over the course of not only this tournament, but previous tournaments, Worlds in particular last year as well, is that we actually do a relatively good job keeping up with, you know, the LPL and LCK teams in terms of pressure in the early game because we're not afraid to go for plays. We have a lot of players that like to be aggro in the early game, and Golden Guardians definitely was that. They actually had a lead for a majority of this game, but we always make one major mistake at some point in the game that completely throws it away, and you're just not going to be able to get away with that against a team like JDG, who is able to punish, they're able to regain control, and then just super clinically close the game out. A really good end coming out from JD Gaming, but let's go ahead and talk about how we got there. Like I said, Golden Guardians actually with a really solid early game. Licorice ends up getting first blood in the top lane, solo killing 369, which is awesome. Seeing 369 get solo killed on the NAR is pretty poetic. You know, NAR, a pretty big pick in the LPL, but now Licorice has solo killed both 369 and Bin on that pick in this tournament alone, which is Really, really funny. Licorice turning into the goat of NA top lane performances internationally. Really good stuff. And basically, you know, as that is going on in the bot lane, JDG try to answer with the dive, but River is there to counter it. Golden Guardians is able to pick up two kills, and now they've got a 1k gold lead. This is really good. This is exactly what I was asking for in the uh, in the previous game. At the end of the previous game, I wanted to see them push that early game lead a little bit harder because that's where I think they're going to be able to generate the most advantages. Obviously, that's Golden Guardians' play style, but I think just in general, that's, you know, if you're able to get a, a 5, 6k gold lead on JD Gaming, like, you might just be able to outlast them, right? It, it's possible. It's certainly not easy, but it's possible. But Golden Guardians actually do continue to push this, you know, lead, I should say. Um, they dive 369 under that tier 2 top. JDG play really aggro, and, you know, Golden Guardians able to pick up two more with 6A jumping around and, you know, being really aggro, and River and Huhi playing really well in a lot of these engages, and it's looking pretty good for Golden Guardians. It really isn't bad. They get another massive fight win in the top side of bot jungle, which is really good, and it's just play after play after play where it looks pretty good for Golden Guardians, and they're actually able to maintain a gold lead. They're actually able to get objectives in this game. This is what you want to see out of a team going up against JD Gaming. They look solid. Unfortunately, it can only last for so long because we end up getting to Baron and Golden Guardian should have full control of this area, but JDG does a really good job, you know, getting into the area, having that objective control, just being faster to the play, and the Baron fight happens, and Golden Guardians get absolutely destroyed in that fight, and that's the major mistake that really costs them. If they were able to be in a better position for that Baron, if they didn't leave it up, you know, for JDG to just kind of get a better position on and then all walk in and, and lose the fight and die... I mean, if they get that Baron, they're in a really good spot to actually end this game out relatively quickly, and unfortunately, they just weren't able to do that. JDG wins that, and then we get to fourth Drake, which is 
really where everything starts to fall apart. A massive win for JDG. Gory gets solo killed by Knight before the fight even starts, and then Stixe is just absolutely destroyed by Kanavi basically immediately into the fight, and they don't have any damage. They don't have any way to win. JDG wins it. You know, Golden Guardians try to be a little bit more aggressive in the late game. They try to find a pick on Ruler to keep the game alive, but he's got stopwatch, so he's able to get out. JDG win the fight, and they're able to close the game out. It's good stuff from JDG. I don't want it to seem like I'm saying that they've lucked into the win or anything like that, because the, the reason that I say that you have to be more clinical if you're a team like Golden Guardians is because you're playing against a team like JDG that is going to take advantage of every single major mistake that you make in the game. They're not going to let you get away with some of the things that you were able to get away with in the mid to late game in the LCS, and that was again the case here. That Baron fight was disastrous. That fourth Drake fight is really where things became catastrophic for Golden Guardians, and you know, those two plays were enough to basically win JDG the game by themselves, no matter what happened the rest of the game. I do want to give a lot of credit to certain players on JDG. Player of the game for me, it's got to go to Kanavi on this Wukong. He made it his mission to not allow Stixe on this Tristana to be able to play the game in the late game, and that was crucial for JDG. The Tristana was actually dealing a lot of damage in a lot of these fights, and Kanavi jumping to the back line, making it more difficult for him to be able to be that aggressor. I mean, that was the difference maker, especially in that fourth Drake fight. And so, really good play from Kanavi. He was great at setting up objectives as well, but it was really the team fighting on this Wukong that gives me the confidence to say that he was player of the game. Credit tonight, he basically made no mistakes throughout the game. He's just so consistent. There's a reason I consider him one of the top two, I mean, maybe three players in the world, right? Like, at minimum, he's just that good. Ruler was really good in the late game on the Zeri. He had a lot of help, but you know, he still had to capitalize on it, and he did, and then missing in 369 were also successful, even if 369 didn't exactly do all that much on the NAR. As for Golden Guardians on the other side, my dud of the game is going to go to Gory in the mid lane. I think you could realistically give this to a couple of people, but Gory accomplished basically nothing in this game other than failing a dive in the mid lane uh, at around six-ish minutes, I want to say, and getting caught out, uh, having to use ultimate in that jungle fight that, yes, Golden Guardians were able to turn, but Gory died super early, and that was the reason they fought in the first place, and then getting solo killed in the pivotal fight by night. Like, there really just wasn't a lot of good plays from Gory on this Lissandra. He was not setting up the rest of his teammates. He was not being an initiator. He was not being a disengager. There just wasn't a lot of positives coming out from this Lissandra pick. I do want to give some credit where credit is due. Who he had a great game, and I think Licorice had a really good game on the Cassante. Those were the two players that didn't stood out. Stixe had his moments where he looked good, but he also tried to fight a couple of people in melee, uh, which isn't exactly what you want to do, the, the Wukong in particular. River had some good engages, but it wasn't, like, total. I would just say that... You know, when you hit that mid to late game, it's a team, it's a macro, you know, error. It's a team error, right? It's not one player individually playing poorly. It's them just making a bad decision as a team. It's stuff that they can fix, but now that they're down in the hole 0-2, it's going to be pretty difficult to fix. If you can win one game, that's going to be a success. We kind of said that going into the series anyways, but now especially when you're down 0-2, back against the wall, game three is going to be a big one. You either are done and going to loser's bracket or... You're surprisingly taking a game off of JDG, uh, one definitely more likely than the other. But for JDG, this is exactly the position you want to be in. It's the position you probably expected yourself to be in. You know, being able to come back into games where you're giving away early game leads, it's a good thing for JDG, but this is LPL versus L LCS, right? This is just kind of the matchup that we've gotten used to. We got used to it yesterday, and we're seeing it again here today. Is JDG going to be able to close it out in three in a clean sweep, or is Golden Guardians actually going to take a game for NA in this round number one? Well, we'll see right now, because the winner of game number three was JD Gaming. They are able to take game number three. They're able to close out this series in a clean sweep and make this round one as short as it could possibly be. Only one series in all of the bracket stage round one at MSI was not three games. And, uh... That certainly should tell you the state that we're currently in, in terms of maybe the top two regions in the world perhaps just being better than everybody else, but it's not like it's particularly surprising. We all kind of knew this going into the tournament, that the top four teams were the best teams in the tournament, and, and that's absolutely come true. Now, again, I don't want to completely disparage a team like Golden Guardians, who, for their expectation level, and certainly for their expectation level prior to the tournament starting... I mean, they have they did a pretty good job in this series. I would say that there were good parts of this game. There were certainly bad parts of this game for them. But JD Gaming is a monster 
of a beast to try and conquer. And unfortunately, Golden Guardians was just not able to climb that mountain here today. But let's go ahead and talk about what happened in game number three to get JDG over the hump and to end the series. Well, decent early game, again, from Golden Guardians. It was all three games, actually very similar to what I was saying about Cloud9 yesterday. Where in the early game, it really wasn't these giant deficits that they were finding themselves in. It was more so transitioning into the mid game that was just a massive problem for the team, and it was very similar today for Golden Guardians. There were a couple of really nice plays. The level one was massive. We're, we're going to have to talk about it. Both teams send five down at level one, but it eventually dissipates. Both junglers go one camp and then try to go bot lane, so it ends up being a 3v3 with one level two member from each team and two level one members. And while JDG is able to get the first blood, they're able to get it onto River. Uh, Sticks and Huhi turn the fight. A fantastic, a, a phenomenal flash hook from Huhi to be able to secure missing, and it's a two for one in favor of Golden Guardians to start the game, which is certainly not bad, even if they did give over first blood. They were able to get a pick on Knight a little bit later, which is really good. It's just plays in the early game that continue to be solid for Golden Guardians. The problem is that elsewhere on the map, they're just losing, right? 369 is just winning in the top lane. Huge CS advantage. Even with the lead that Stixay was able to generate from the kills early, he wasn't able to actually compete with Ruler in terms of lane pressure. And so that there was a lot going wrong there. And then, you know, Kanavi was just starting to get online. And so when Golden Guardians goes for things like Drake and they walk out just assuming that JDG had given them over, but actually they were being pincered and you know they were getting obliterated then giving over two for zero doesn't seem all that good for first dragon of the game like that kind of play is where JDG was going to be able to find their advantages in this one and they absolutely executed on it multiple picks in the mid game from JDG it wasn't just that one you know uh, Kanavi ends up finding who he just in uh, I believe bot lane like tribush just kills him Stixay gets dove mid, and yes, Golden Guardians do turn one for it, but this is the start of River just being consistently out of position basically the entire game. I do understand that on Rengar, you're going to have to be a little bit more aggro. Sometimes you're just going to be out of position if the rest of the team isn't there to follow up or if they have vision of you, but man, what a miserable game from the Golden Guardians jungler. This is easily the worst game that he has played at the tournament, and it came at a pretty bad time. River getting picked over and over and over, and then River and Golden Guardians just continue to be in the wrong spots. You know, JDG pretty successfully just able to position around objectives better and just slowly but surely continuously grab small leads. You know, one for zeros, two for zeros, over and over and over again until the point where they're like legitimately up 10k gold purely from catches, and then they can just push it down mid. The first time doesn't work, but then they go top lane and, you know, they're able to get a little bit more uh, health back and they're able to end off of that. It's just not a very good look for Golden Guardians. They had absolutely no pressure, and honestly, it felt like they weren't even trying to force things. It, it honestly just felt like they were completely mental boomed by the end of game number three, which I don't entirely you know, not understand, I guess I could say, but for JDG, this is exactly what you wanted to see. It's dominance, it's clean, and it's secure. Like, that, it's it's everything you could have asked for. Kanavi's gonna get my player of the game on the Kha'Zix. This is kind of a comp that I think can be a little bit volatile. We've seen the Nautilus Kha'Zix pulled out at this tournament already. You know, T1's done it, G2's done it. There have been a couple teams that have been able to pull it out. But this was probably the most clinical Kha'Zix execution that we saw the entire tournament. This was a great game from Kanavi. He was everywhere on the map. He was getting picks. He was getting fed. He was becoming a nuisance. He was winning 1v2s even without isolation against the Jinx, which is massive in the late game. He just became an absolute monster. He's also going to get my player of the series here for JD Gaming. I think you could very realistically give this to a couple of people. I thought Knight was super good in this series, almost underratedly good. He was making a lot of plays, missing, had a pretty good one as well. But for me, Kanavi was definitely the most consistent member for JDG in this round number one. And uh, that's a good sign because honestly, when I was looking at this JDG team in the regular season, he was probably the weakest member in terms of performance across the LPL spring split. And so to see him come out at the beginning of MSI and look like, you know, the Kanavi that we knew from 2022, that's a really good sign. And it's a really good look to see that this team can play for him, that he doesn't always have to sacrifice in order to make sure that everyone else feels comfortable. But everybody on JDG was good here. 369 was much better in this game number three. A lot of really good Gragas ultimates. Knight setting so many things up. Ruler and Missing were just fun phenomenal in lane basically the entire series it was just a player gap from JDG I mean their mid and late game was better because they are better and that's exactly what we saw here they've got an LPL finals rematch going on in round number two against Billy Billy that's certainly going to be an interesting one but uh you know we'll, we'll get to that towards the end of the video as for Golden Guardians definitely what we expected like I, I hate to say that I hate to say you know them getting demolished wasn't exactly a surprise but it wasn't exactly a surprise we didn't think this team was going to actually be able to compete with JD Gaming and unfortunately we were right now they did have some good moments they had some good early games especially that game two where it really felt like if they didn't just flip that Baron fight like it would have been a lot better if they didn't just like 
randomly not get to the objective at the right time, it would have been better, but those are the kinds of mistakes that make top teams top teams and make mediocre teams mediocre teams at an international level, and that's unfortunately what we saw here. Rivers easily dead of the game. This was the worst game of the series from anybody. This was miserable Rengar. I, I don't want to see him on this pick ever again. He was out of position. He was dealing no damage. It didn't really seem like he had any idea of what he wanted to do. I'm not even really sure why he went for the pick in the first place. Maybe the lore matchup against Kha'Zix just really wanted to do the hunt. I, I, don't, I don't really know what Rengar was for in this game, but it absolutely didn't work out. Gori wasn't particularly good in this series at all. Sticks A had a good score line, but a lot of that was donated kills, and especially that one that level one fight. Outside of that, he was pretty bad basically across this entire series. Who he made some good plays. Licorice certainly wasn't a disaster. They were easily the two best players on Golden Guardians, but you know, basically they performed as expected. They now go down into lower bracket and they have to get a rematch from the LCS finals against Cloud9, a matchup that honestly a lot of their weaknesses kind of just got exposed in, and I'm not entirely sure that that's going to be majorly different here, even if people are pretty high on what Golden Guardians has been able to do at MSI so far. They're a good team. They definitely are a squad that I don't think is going to give up, but in terms of the grand scheme of things, this is probably the most expected result we could have. But for JDG, they're tournament favorites. Still, they did absolutely nothing in this series to dissuade me from that. This is a team that now goes on to face BLG, and that's a series that I think a lot of people are going to expect them to win which could very easily put them in winner's finals very quickly. They had an easy time in round number one, but it definitely gets a lot more difficult from here. All right, but that is going to do it, not only for my day four bracket stage video, but for round one, at least upper bracket round number one. We got all four series out of the way now. We know Gen G, T1, BLG, and JD Gaming are going to be moving on to round number two with the Western teams G2, Mad Lions, C9, and Golden Guardians moving down to lower bracket. It's definitely going to be intriguing. This is the exact result that I predicted in my bracket. I think a lot of other people were on the same page. Not a lot of upsets being called here, but I want to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Who do you think is going to be winning in round number two between the Eastern teams? Who do you think is going to be winning in lower bracket between the Western teams? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and feedback. Of course, also talk about JDG versus Golden Guardians down there and your thoughts on the series. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. Not only does it let me know that you guys are enjoying the content that's here on the channel, but it also helps, also helps get this video out to a lot more people, which obviously I'm really appreciative of. Of course, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We're posting about every single day of MSI here on the channel. That's going to include winner's bracket, loser's bracket, everything in between. Of course, we've already done every day, including plans up till this point. You can still check out the videos up in the iCard, but if you're new here, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when those videos go live basically every single day. But of course, with all that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day, and I will see you all next